welcome. I think we can all agree on the fact that the original Ghostbusters film is cinematic gold. It is a fantastic piece of cinematic art and of course started a very popular franchise in Ghostbusters. The second film afterwards, it gets a bit of criticism but I personally really enjoyed it. We then had quite a wait for another film and it wasn't worth waiting for. This looks extraordinarily bad. Because we got 2016's mess. I don't even want to call it a film. It's god awful. If you've not seen it, please don't. There's only one good film to come out of that film. We learned that Chris Hemsworth can do comedy really well. That's it. The rest of the film was an absolute mess. We did get 2021's Ghostbusters Afterlife, which was much better and very enjoyable. But compared to the original two, it doesn't quite compare. We never got that Ghostbusters 3 film, which apparently, if you read online, the three actors really wanted to make. It was Bill Murray who stopped the third one being made because of, well, reasons that would make this video far too long. Yet we did come close to a third Ghostbusters film with the original cast. In video game form, I'm talking about 2009's Ghostbusters the video game. Not only did Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis have a lot of input into the script, and not only does it have the likenesses of the original cast, but also you've got them actually doing the voices. The original cast returned and voiced their own characters. I've made an extraordinarily frightening discovery. Why don't you all go away? All my data indicate that the ghost world is beginning to push through multiple cross portals from their dimension into ours. Well, more overtime. Guys, look! <laughs> when it came out, it was everywhere. It was on the PS2, the PS3, the Xbox 360, the Wii, the PSP, the DS, and PC. And maybe something else if I've forgotten it. And it was a good game, and still is, and a good looking game for the time. It still is. But now we have Ghostbusters the video game remastered. And that is available on pretty much everything, even Nintendo Switch. And it is the best possible way to experience not only a fantastic video game, but the closest we can ever hope to get to Ghostbusters 3. Because the story here is absolutely superb. You start off in the Ghostbusters firehouse and you can have a good look around and you can find some really nice easter eggs if you're a fan of the series. It's just really nice being there and getting to explore the most famous location in the Ghostbusters films, or arguably the most famous anyway. You are playing as a rookie, a fifth Ghostbuster, a new recruit, and the original Ghostbusters are going to teach you exactly how to use those proton packs to their full potential. That's right, your weapon of course is the proton pack, what else could it be? And it is done really well. You can't just hold down the fire button constantly when you see a ghost because it overheats and needs venting to cool, something you're in control of. And to keep things interesting, not only do you have the standard proton stream to shoot, you can also get modifications throughout the game as part of the story, such as a slime cannon, and it becomes integral to the story and some of the light environmental puzzles you would encounter as well. You also, of course, get your trusty traps to force the ghosts into once they've been weakened suitably. And, of course, the PKE meter for detecting those ghoulish ne'er-do-wells. And also gain information about the ghosts to help you in trapping them. You get to explore some really iconic locations from the films. Not just the firehouse, which I've, of course, mentioned, but the hotel from the first Ghostbusters. And there are some brand new environments which look absolutely amazing. As far as remasters go, this was a good looking game for its time, but if you go back and play the older version, you can tell it's an older game. This, to me at least, in my humble opinion, looks as good as any game that's come out. It absolutely looks brilliant. So whoever did the remaster, bravo. The core gameplay is amazing fun. I've already touched on, of course, that the Proton Pack is your weapon of choice. 
as you're shooting it in the environments, they get torn up just like in the films. I mean, that was a bit of a trademark of them in the films. They go into an area which looks nice and they practically burn it down. And you get to do this here, which is really nice and true to the story. Tethering and wearing out the ghosts before you put them into the trap is always an absolute blast. And some of them do take some time to get in there. They do put up a really decent fight, which makes you feel like you really are part of the action. It's not just point and shoot. You really are tethering, wearing out through slamming these ghosts and making them ready to go into that trap to be captured. And all the while, you've got other things going on around you. So if you've got multiple ghosts on screen, which you'll have most of the time, not only do you have the challenge of taking out your targeted nasty, but you've also got to put up with the other ghosts coming at you and attacking you. You've got to dodge and avoid, otherwise they'll knock you down, you'll lose your tether on your target, and you've got to start again. Fighting ghosts with a proton pack has got to be any Ghostbusters fan's dream. And they make it feel as genuine an experience as I think could possibly be done in a video game. I suspect a lot of effort went into this mechanic and it's just worked out so, so well. It's the closest you'll get to feeling like a Ghostbuster. After each stage, once you've secured the necessary ghosties, then you have the opportunity to spend some of the money you've earned in upgrades on your equipment. Something I do recommend you do, as as you progress throughout the game, as I'm sure you'd expect, the enemies do get tougher and tougher. So you do need to upgrade your equipment to keep up with them, otherwise a fulfilling challenge will become a little bit annoyingly difficult. Fortunately, this shouldn't be a problem as there's plenty of money to be earned. Especially if you take advantage of the PKE meter and scan as many ghosties as you can into the spirit guide. Not only does it increase and add to the gameplay because it's a collectible you can get, it adds to your fortunes. There are as well some really good challenging boss battles, whether you're fighting them in an alternative dimension, ruined castle, hotel ballroom, or on the streets of New York, they all provide their own unique challenge and they're really good to get your teeth into. And unless you play it on the easiest level possible, which I don't recommend, you know, man up, let's put it on at least the middle difficulty, if not on the hardest, you will need multiple goes to figure out exactly how to take these creeps down. Which is a good thing. I think the difficulty level is balanced here. So you get a good fulfilling experience, which isn't over too long, without it necessarily feeling like a grind or frustration. Because it isn't the longest game in the whole wide world. You're looking at approximately eight to 10 hours, depending how completionist you go with the collectibles. That works for me. You get the story fully flushed out. It doesn't feel like there's any fodder there. That's just elongating the game for the sake of it. It all fits in quite well. And I would rather have an eight to 10 hour game, which fits perfectly into that time frame and have it extended through things like meaningless fetch quests, for example. And, let's be honest, sometimes collectibles can be a little bit of an unnecessary distraction to add in some content which you perhaps don't really need in a game. But here, I genuinely went for as many as I possibly could. I didn't 100% it, but I did as many as I possibly could because they were all, or at least the majority, Easter eggs which either were relevant to the current story which I was playing through or to past films and as a fan of the series I enjoyed seeing them so it actually felt a bit worthwhile to me and let me know your opinions there. I absolutely adore the presentation of this game. I think it looks superb, the voice acting is absolutely on point as you would expect from actors of this calibre. The proton pack mechanics worked fantastically well for me, as good as I could ever hope them to be. And I even enjoyed the bits with the PKE meter, where I was going around investigating for clues, hidden ghosts, and trying to track down those ghoulies. Honestly, if you in any way enjoy Ghostbusters, please get this game. It is an absolutely fantastic time to be had. It feels like a service to the fans. However, if you don't really like Ghostbusters, or it's a franchise you're not very aware of, but you like a supernatural theme in your games, give this a chance, because it is such a good time to be had, 
and I can't see anything wrong with it being your introduction to the Ghostbusters franchise. I'm fairly certain if you've got no experience of it and you play this game, you'll be getting straight onto the streaming services to watch at least the first two films. But seriously, don't bother with the 2016 one. But what do you think? I've obviously got a bit of franchise bias here because I adore the Ghostbusters. I absolutely love this game. I can't decide whether it's the game mechanics, the good looking presentation, or the story that keeps me coming back. Reality is it's probably a combination of all three because it's just that good. Have you played it? Do you think it's as good as I do? Or do I just have rose tinted Ghostbusters glasses on? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you all. If you've enjoyed this video and you fancy pressing the like button or subscribe, happy days. If not, no pressure. I'm just grateful you watched my video. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Ta-da for now.